How to hold back the ageing process is the fundamental goal of a multi-billion dollar industry. And a lot of focus is on the most visible evidence of ageing, the face, with lifts, fillers and Botox. But what if you could do this without needles and tens of thousands of dollars in expenditure? That's what facial yoga is offering and a trial has recently been published of what might some, some might think is a fad. Murad Alam is Professor of Dermatology at Northwestern University in Chicago. It's been something that has captured the popular imagination. It certainly seems like a good idea. If you can exercise your body, why not exercise your face? What happens when your face ages that suggests that exercise might make it better? I mean, isn't it just the skin and the underlying tissue falling apart and everything sags and goes to pot? That's pretty much it. There are several specific components. First of all, the top layers of the skin do sag. They become less elastic. They slide down lower on the face. Underneath that, there is a subcutaneous fat envelope, spongy fat tissue. And in recent years, it's become clear that that subcutaneous fat layer is comprised of these jigsaw puzzle-like fat pads that interlock and create the shape of the face. So this is your chubby face? That's your chubby face, exactly. And over time, those become thinner as well. And those also slide down in the face, thereby creating hollowing and loss of volume in the face. So then you get to the muscle underneath the fat. Yes. Underneath the fat is the muscle layer. And that is where we feel facial yoga works. We don't really know a way to make the skin more elastic. And we don't really know a way non-invasively to make the fat pads fatter. But we do know how to make the muscle, which is underneath the fat, bigger. So this is bigger biceps as applied to the face, essentially. Exactly. When you did this trial, did you just pick up the exercises that facial yoga does, or did you invent your own? We did not invent our own. We tried to find somebody who was enthusiastic, who was skilled at training participants in one method of such exercise called facial yoga. So here's the ultimate challenge, Murat. On radio, describe the exercises. Let's just go. I know there's 32 of them. We're not going to go through all 32, but give us a flavor that we can mimic you as you go. The ones that we found to be most useful are in the mid face, and they entail things like puckering your mouth, blowing out your chin, scrunching your jaw, affecting your lower and upper cheeks. You basically look ridiculous doing these. So, how do you mimic weight? I mean, to really bulk up your muscles, you've got to do reps to, I mean, the theory here, sometimes if I know what I'm talking about, but, you know, the theory is that you do maybe 15 reps and you put on weights that get you to fatigue and essentially you bulk up muscle by fatiguing it on a regular basis and increasing the stress on the muscles. So you get tear in the fibers and you get muscle growth and hypertrophy. How do you imitate that in the face? It's not a weight-based exercise in the face, obviously. It is repetition-based, but it's very modest repetition. There are 32 exercises in the program we studied, and they're done for a total of 30 minutes. So it's only about a minute per exercise. The facial muscles are much smaller, and the amount of volume we're trying to add is much smaller. So maybe that's good enough. At least it appears to be. So, okay, let's get down to the study as well, because it wasn't a randomized controlled trial. This was really a proof of concept where you studied a group of women aged between 40 and 65. So just describe the study and how you measured the outcome. Sure. So we exactly like you said, we got about slightly more than 20 women ages 40 to 65. We had Mr. Stokorski, who was our trainer, train them in two training sessions of 90 minutes each on how to do these exercises. And thereafter, they did these exercises at home first for 30 minutes a day for the first eight weeks and 30 minutes every other day for the next 12 weeks. And the way we measured the results is we had a normed, validated scale that we assessed patient photographs on both before and after. And in addition to that, we had blinded raters look at the photograph, jumbled up, and try to determine how old patients looked. And what did you find? We found that they did look a little bit younger. They looked about almost three years younger, and that, in fact, that improvement continued also in the second half of the study when they were only doing exercises 30 minutes every other day. And presumably it didn't happen in all the women. What proportion of the women saw benefit? The majority saw some benefit, but also we had a number of dropouts. I think that's important to realize. About a quarter of the patients decided not to follow through with the program. And when you have dropouts, you have to wonder why that's happening. 
in some cases, it's just the inconvenience of doing the exercises or of coming back for a repeat training session. But it's certainly possible that some of those patients also didn't notice as much benefit. And what about skin types? So you could have Anglo-Irish, very fair skin, redheads, people of Indian ethnicity. Did you get different responses according to different skin types or ethnicities? Our sample was predominantly Caucasian patients. And we would expect them to maybe need it the most because they tend to get the greatest degree of fat atrophy. But interestingly, one of our best results was in an African-American patient. What about wrinkles and creases? You actually might create them with the exercises. That's an excellent point, and we were concerned about that because there are people who laugh and smile a lot and get crow's feet, these crinkles around their eyes, and some of us frown, and that gives us lines on our forehead. So when we're actively exercising, are we in fact creating those lines? We didn't find that to be the case. Our hypothesis is when people smile a lot or frown and create lines, they're doing so for many, many minutes, probably many hours every day. Whereas in the context of this training, we were doing each exercise for only one minute a day at most. Now, there's a huge industry in fillers, and presumably this replaces that. But one part of face where people put in fillers is the lips. Were there any changes to the lips with all the puckering that was going on? We did not see any changes that we could call statistically significant at the lip. But does this potentially replace cosmetic procedures such as lasers, fillers, Botox? I don't think so. I think this is something that patients may choose to do in addition to those specific procedures and improve their overall result. But the procedures you mentioned work really well and to be extremely safe and they provide a consistent benefit in virtually all patients. So I suspect both the degree and the reliability of the improvement that people get from those safe, effective procedures will still be the gold standard, but facial yoga might be done in addition. So cosmetic dermatologists live to fight another day. (laughs) Exactly. Murad, um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you're suitably contorted after that. Murad Alam is Professor of Dermatology at Northwestern University in Chicago. I'm Norman Swan. This has been The Health Report. I hope you can join us next week.